Before we start today's episode, I wanted to say that I had to give back my microphone and that I'm sorry for today's audio quality. Also, today's episode won't deal with the hotkeys as I said in the last episode because my finished project crashed and I have to redo everything I did. So before we deal with hotkeys, I will upload videos in which I show you how you can do things that are requested in the comments. Today's episode, we will do a basic equipment system that was requested. First off, go to the media file link in the description and download the texture pack 2 that we will need for the next episodes. After we did that, we need some meshes for our weapons. Fortunately, there are some for free on the marketplace. So search for Infinity Blade and then go to the Infinity Blades weapons. And if you don't already own them, first off download them. Now when you've downloaded them, you can go to the Infinity Blade weapons, add them to the project and select your tutorial project. Then that will take some time. After you have added the weapons, let's open up our project. Now when your project has opened, you will see that there is a new folder called Infinity Blade Weapons. And when you go to Weapons and Blades, for example, you will see that you have lots of different weapons that we can use now. Before we start using them, let's import the texture pack. You just downloaded on Mediafire. Alright, so select all of the textures in here and let's drag and drop them into our textures folder. Then with all of them selected, right click and under asset actions, bulk edit via property matrix, go to the level of detail and set the texture group to the UI and to set the compression settings to user interface 2D. Now we can save all of them. Another thing we'll have to do before we start working with our equipment system is to go to our widgets under main widget and you can see that currently our health bar really doesn't look very interesting but we will change that so all right let's go to the style open the background image and set the health bar default texture also draw that as an image then we can close that go to the fill image and here search for health bar fill also draw that as an image now you can give in something for the percent and let's increase our alpha to 1. And let's clear the padding for this one. Now you can see that our health bar already looks much better. Now let's start with the implementation of our equipment system. Let's open up the top down character and we will add weapons by adding a component. Search for skeleton mesh. Then we will attach that to our mesh. So to test how it will look for the skeleton mesh, search for Hero Sword and choose Hero Sword 22. Now you can select a parent socket, so the skeleton mesh will follow the movement of the parent socket, which can be a bone of the skeleton. When you hit that little glass icon here, you see a list of all of the sockets. And for weapons, you could, for example, use index underscore zero one underscore R. So the right hand of our character. Now you can see that it follows the hand animation here. Let's also reset the location and for the rotation set the Y rotation to 45 degree. Now you can see that it's attached to our character and now that's the way our equipment system will work. However we will have to add the component at runtime so let's remove our skeleton mesh and now keep the top down character open Go to your inventory system, blueprints, item classes, and we'll right click on our BP Master item to create a child blueprint class. This one will be our item underscore master weapon. And that will define how every of our weapons will work later. Open that up, expand the item info, check the can be used. For the use text, we will type in equip then it should not be stackable and for the category let's create a new category so let's minimize our master weapon go to our enums e underscore item categories and let's add a new one called weapon save that compile and save that here now we can select weapon for our category and close our enum we will also need some other variables in here the first one will be the skeletal mesh of our weapon, so call that weapon mesh and for the type select skeletal mesh 
reference. Then we will need the socket that it will be attached to. So socket name and make that a name and create another variable once more that will be the relative transform change the variable type to transform and that will be it for our item master weapon let's hop back to our top down character and in here we will first need another variable that will be the equipped weapon change the variable type to item underscore master weapon reference we will add another variable and that will be the equipped mesh which will be a skeletal mesh component reference now compile and save first off let's do our equip function so add the plus sign for a function here call that equip item it will have an input which will be the item to equip and change that type to master weapon again reference and also create an output for success question mark that will be a boolean okay so first off we will get our equip weapon and check for is valid so do we already have an equip weapon if so first off we won't do anything but if we don't have anything equipped we will set our equip weapon to the item that comes from our input node then search for add skeletal mesh component for the transform you can get the equip weapon and search for the relative transform variable here after that set the return values to our equip mesh let's drag in our equip mesh and now we want to set skeletal mesh and we will set that to the mesh of our equip weapon so search for weapon mesh connect that to the new mesh make sure that in your item master weapon the weapon mesh is not a debug skeletal mesh but a real skeletal mesh reference now compile and save and we should be able to connect that then off of the equip mesh we want to attach it to component and the parent will be the mesh of our character drag that in connect that to the parent socket name will come from our equip weapon so search for the socket name connect that to the socket name here for the location rotation and scale rule keep everything relative and after that we can return successful now that's it for our equipment functionality but before we do everything of this we want to get our inventory actor so our inventory reference and we will have to try to remove item at index right the index comes from our item from our in item get the index there connect that to the index amount will be one then off of the success search for if so if we are able to remove our weapon from the inventory we can equip that if we're not able to remove it we can return false now let's do unequip item that function won't need an input but we also have to make a success boolean for the out first thing to do get the equip weapon set sure is valid but now we can only do something if our equip weapon is valid so if it's not valid return with false however if it is valid let's get the inventory reference and we'll have to add the item to the inventory again so add item the class will come from our equip weapon off of that search for get class and amount will be one one problem however is that we will see our notification widget even if we just unequip the item so let's change that double click on our add item function to open that up and in here let's create a new input called show 
notification question mark and before we do anything in here we'll search for if connect that to the branch so if you want to show the notification we go into the next branch if not just go to the add item internal function let's also make sure that our pickup actor shows the notification so go to our blueprints item classes pp pickup actor here check the show notification now we can close that close our inventory and continue with our function so if it is valid we add the item and we don't want to show a notification for that then let's search for a branch again and connect the success to it if we weren't successful to add the item because our inventory is full or something we will return with false if we were able to add the item we can get the equip mesh and destroy component after that get our equipped weapon and destroy the actor before we return with successful all right that's it for our unequipped function now what you can also do is go back to the equipped item and if we already have an equipped weapon so if it is valid we try to unequip the item and branch off of the success value if we were not successful then we can return with false for our equip item as well but if we were able to unequip the item we can call the equip item function again so we will start from here again and this time our equipped weapon won't be valid so we go to our remove item at index for the item connect that to the item of our input node and then we return with the success of our equipped item call alright compile and save it that's it for our functions now in the item master weapon we have to right click and search for on use and go to the event event on use so now we override what happens when we use our weapons and the only thing we'll have to do is go to the inventory off of the inventory get the top down character and of the top down character we try to equip item and the item will be ourself connect that to the execution search for branch so if we were successful we won't do anything but if we fail to equip the item we can destroy ourselves so already we are technically able to equip items but we cannot equip them feel free to set up a widget for that but I would just do it with a with clicking the D key so go to the event graph right click anywhere search for D by the way you can also delete everything that was just for debugging purposes remove that now when we press D let's call unequip item okay so we set up our functionality for equipping and unequipping items now we also need a real weapon to put inside of our level so close the top down character close the item master weapon and right click on item master weapon to create a child blueprint of that call that item underscore hero sort open that up now we only have to change the variables inside of here first off let's expand the item info give it a name hero sort description a powerful sort that glows in bright blue for the icon search for sword and choose the hero sword 22 icon that is inside of the texture stack make sure it can be used cannot be stacked this can remain as equipped and the category will be weapon now the socket name will be our index underscore zero one underscore r for the relative transform give it a rotation of 45 degrees in y and 90 in z that were the values that we tested when we added it to our top down character and for the weapon mesh search for hero sword 22 
Now let's compile and save. Also put that somewhere inside of our level. Let's just alt and drag that pickup actor, choose the item to add to our hero sword and we will add two of them. Before we test make sure that you go to your widgets and on the obtained item widget on the graph here when we select a color based off of our category double click on the weapon color and we can choose something like an orange. Now let's compile, save and we should be ready to test. So first we can see our newly created health bar that looks much better than the one before. So it works that we add some health points. Let's pick up our two swords. You obtain two hero swords and we can see them here. Now when we right click we can see our equip text. Let's hit that and you see that it was added to the right hand. Now we can press D to de-equip that. See it's added to inventory again. We can also equip one. Drag the other one here. And now when we equip the other one you can see that now technically the second of our swords is equipped, but you see no difference because they have the same mesh. What you probably also want to do if you're working on a real game is to add something like a strength modifier to your swords and to change variables in our top-down character based on the equipped item, but you should be able to do that yourself. So, see you in the next video.